When you create a wiring diagram in Creo Schematics, there are a few different required properties that the entities in the schematic need to have in order to perform logical referencing in Creo Parametric. Let's take a look at those different required properties. If you are creating a wire, the wires have to have the name of the spool you want to use, the minimum bend radius of that spool, the thickness or diameter of the spool, the units for the thickness, and also the object type set properly. For cables, which is a hier hierarchical group of wires, you need the spool name, the minimum bend radius for the cable itself, the thickness, its units, and another property called num underscore cond, which is the number of conduct conductors in the cable itself. For your connectors, regardless of whether they are a block or a group, you need the model name. You also need to have def internal length, which is the default internal length. In other words, the length of the cable that goes inside of the connector from the entry port, that helps you get the right length of wire. Also, you need def grouping, whether it's going to be wire, flat, or round num of pins, and also object type. For the ports in your connectors, they only have one required property, and that is entry port. And that's going to be the name of the coordinate system that is going to be used for routing in the model. And a lot of times people just use a single coordinate system in the connector models in Creo Parametric, and they give it the name of entry, me, I'm kind of nuts. I like to do pin-to-pin -pin routing, so a lot of times I'll set up my connectors to have individual entry ports for every pin in the model. Let's take a look at how to do this in Creo Schematics. I created a wiring diagram real quick using the demo database that comes with Creo Schematics. If you navigate to where Creo Schematics is installed on your computer, the load point, then you're going to have a demo db.rsd file. And it's going to be located in the load point, and I'm using Creo Schematics 4.0. It's the MO10 build code. Then in the schematics folder, there will be a Creo Schematics folder, and here you see the demo database. A file that ends with the .rsd extension is actually a packed Creo Schematics design. In other words, it's how the different folders are zipped up together, and then you can open up this directly in Creo Schematics, and you've got a demo database. Let's take a look at that. So in the demo database, there are a bunch of sheets that are already created for you to show you block diagrams, circuit diagrams, wiring diagrams, a block interconnect, a wiring interconnect. But here's a little wiring diagram I made by using the Catalog Explorer to grab some of the different entities. For example, if I go to groups over here, here you can see that they have a variable connector for a jack and also a plug that you can use. So again, nice stuff to get you started so that you don't have to waste a few weeks developing your own catalog before you can do stuff. Let me close out of the Catalog Explorer. And on here, I just threw in a few different items. I have some groups for my connectors. I also have some blocks for connectors in here. And I have a cable and I have a few different wires. Let's take a look at these and how we would get the necessary properties. By the way, if you go to the Design tab, you can click on the Edit Global Parameters button, and here you can see a dialog box that has all the different parameters that already exist in the model, and you can create your own different ones and then assign them to the different object types over on the left. And one thing I recommend, don't go nuts creating, creating a lot of different properties. Generally, I find that I use schematics for two main purposes. First, in order to route the wires in 3D in Creo Parametric, and second, to provide as an aid to the people who are going to manufacture and test the harnesses later on. So just give them the information that you need. You don't really have to capture excessive amounts of information in your schematic. But again, here you can see the different properties that are available. Here you can see that components have one for model name assigned to them. So let's close out of here. And the first one that we'll take a look at are the different connectors. First, let's go to this 
group and I can right click and hold and then choose properties and here we can see the group properties for here and as I showed on the slides there are five different required properties and this particular one does not have model name assigned to it yet if you don't have model name listed in here it's going to use the name of the object itself if you want to add in model name to give it a different value you can click the add button and I'll scroll down over here to find model name and then click the OK button now model name is in here and it's unset and let's say that you know I want to set it to the name maybe some kind of D38999 connector maybe my part number is 38999 and I'll do underscore 26 F A that's all that I'll put in for this one. So maybe that's the name of the part that I want to use in Creo Parametric. The next one that is required is default internal length. Let's click on the add button and find it in here and click OK. And right now it's unset. Maybe my coordinate system is located in the, in the interior of the component. So I might be happy with a value of zero. So I will add that in here. Another one that we need is the default grouping. Let's click the add button. And by the way, I'm adding these one at a time. You can actually select multiple ones in here and add them together. And the default grouping is using a value of round. The other values that you have are flat if you have a connector for a ribbon cable, or you could just use wire if it only allows a single conductor in there. But round is a good default value to use. And let's see, we have number of pins. Let's change that to a value of 8. And our last one that we need, well, it's the object type, but the object type is set up here. So we are good to go for that one. Let's click the OK button. So that's how we did it for a group. It's the same process if you're using a block. For example, this component is a block. Right mouse click and hold and choose properties. And right now it doesn't really have anything in here. So we can click the Add button. I'm just going to find those different ones that I need and just using the control key let's see I also need the model name and number of pins and I'll click the OK button and that way we can start setting in these different values so maybe this is just going to have two pins on it default internal length I'm probably going to use a value of zero again or you could use maybe or have a quarter inch or whatever I just set in the different values that you need in there so that is good let's click the OK button out of there the next object that we'll take a look at let's do a wire so I'll just grab one of these different wires over here right mouse click and hold and choose properties and for the different ones that we need in here we already have units and thickness we also already have the name of the spool and we have the minimum bend radius and here we have the object type so right now we have everything that we need in here so we can click the OK button for a cable let's select it and right mouse click and hold and choose properties and so for the cable we need to have the spool name that's populated in there and here we have num cond number of conductors there we have our value of four is already set here's our minimum band radius it's set to a value of five and our thickness and our units so that's good looks like they're using a value about 2x of the thickness for the minimum band radius which is which is a good value for doing a lot of routing uh, let me go back to the wire I'm not sure if I checked for a minimum band radius so let's Go back over there oh yep there we have our minimum bend radius here we have our thickness so this is all good in here by the way your two different values of units that you have are inch inch spelled out or mm for millimeters let's cancel out of here and the last one that we're going to take a look at are entry ports and for selecting an entry port what's helpful sometimes is to use the filter down at the bottom left hand of the screen and that way I can make sure I'm grabbing this particular entry port right mouse click and hold and choose properties and here we have the entry port parameter it's set to a value of entry that's good 
So I can click the OK button out of here. And so that way you can verify that your different entities have the correct properties so that you can send the information to Creo Parametric and perform your logical referencing. You can avoid a lot of issues by having your central catalog set up properly so that when people instance the different objects on the schematic sheet, it's already got the correct information filled out in there and someone's not going to have to do a lot of debugging between the XML file that they're using in Creo Parametric and your schematic in Creo Schematics. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.